Jamie and Adam are testing the movie myth that diving onto a grenade will smother the blast and save your buddies. But with the neighbors likely to gripe about a grenade going off in the backyard, the team head for one of their favorite spots. When you want to blow up grenades, you've got to go to a place where they blow up grenades. Like the Alameda County Sheriff's Department's bomb range. That's where we are here. This place is a veritable Mythbuster mecca. Tori, Grant, and Carrie came here to blow up their pants. Oh, those are exploding pants. And Jamie and Adam. You gonna paint your house with explosives? Had a little TNT party of their own. Get your pirate face on! We're about to shoot some cannons! And in the pirate special, Redbeard and Cap'n Heidemann tested the myth that cannonball splinters are more deadly than the cannonball. But this time, the guys are going gung-ho with grenades, and the Mythbusters turn to some old friends, Frank Doyle and J.D. Nelson, for the crucial explosive ingredients. All right, so what do we got? Okay. So, if I pull the pin on one of these things, it's gonna go off, right? No, Jamie, these are inert. We wouldn't trust Adam near the live ones. But first, Adam can't resist testing a mini-myth. So uh, the thing I've always wondered is, can you really, can you really pull these out with your teeth? It works in the movies, but how about real life? Ah, ow. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I would do this when you had a perfectly good finger right over here. It requires over 10 pounds of pressure to pull a grenade pin. So this myth is busted, a bit like Adam's teeth. Seeing as Jamie and Adam's expertise in this field comes from the movies, why don't we start with a little Grenades 101? Now, what the heck are all these things? A hand grenade is basically a small handheld explosive device. It's meant to be thrown, and uh, after a certain delay, it goes off. And this is how they work. As everyone knows, the pin comes out first. That releases the striker lever, which hits the percussion cap, and that sets off the chemical fuse. Finally, the detonator sparks the packed explosive material. There's a big boom, and the metal casing fragments into deadly shrapnel. So if the M67 is going to be our grenade today, uh, do we get to pull the pin and throw them? Well, we won't be doing that today for safety reasons. We'll have a very controlled situation. And uh, I think it's a good time for JD and myself to go and prepare the actual grenades that we're gonna use today. So while control freaks Frank and JD set up a remote firing system, let's start assembly lining this thing. It's time to call for our movie extras. But our leading man can kick back in his trailer as this test is the control. We are gonna detonate one of our grenades without anything inhibiting it. We're gonna see what it does to our figures standing around it. Then we'll have a baseline comparison of damage to compare all the other subsequent tests to. As the director of this slice of movie mayhem, Adam choreographs his stuntmen. I am standing on the exact location where we're gonna be detonating our series of grenade tests. The grenade is lethal within 15 feet and can cause injuries within 40 to 45 feet. The actors are placed at five foot intervals from the blast epicenter. And with everyone poised for action, JD brings the small package with the big boom. Okay, here it is. <laughs> well, it goes right where that cone is. Okay. With the live grenade in position, our experts clear the area and begin their preparation. We're going to be putting a blasting cap into the body of the grenade, into the explosive, running it by hard wire all the way back to the fire control point where we will do the button pushing and initiate the explosion. 